Thank you very much, sir. Good morning to you all, Mr. President, President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, Mr. Carlos Limelu, Chairman of Carlos Lim Foundation, His Excellency Mr. Jose Antonio Maide Curibena, Secretary of uh, Foreign Affairs, Mexico, my dear colleague Irina Bukova, Director General for UNESCO, and uh, co-Vice Chairman. Distinguished Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, let me first offer you a very warm welcome to Mexico, and it is a real pleasure and a great honor to have so many commissioners and their representatives here with us today in this fine country. I would like to thank our co-chair, Carlos Slim, in particular, for his kind invitation and for hosting this seventh meeting of the Broadband Commission. Particularly, I would like to express our gratitude for uh, having shared with us the very fine uh, initiative, Aldea Digital, that uh, is organi was organizing, organizing this week. I mean, the inspiration we got from that, Aldea Digital means the digital village. I felt in a digital city, and I believe that uh, this will go to Mundo Digital very soon as uh, the Commission continues to do its work. And this is a great contribution to the world, and I would like to really thank uh, Carlos Lim for putting this together. I would, uh, before I go any further, I would like also to thank all the commissioners for the very, very strong commitment that we have shown over the past two and a half years, close to three years now. On, Ju on July 12th, we'll have three years of work. And this is our seventh meeting, and you've been always all committed especially today, especially want to have a, pay a special uh, tribute to our friend Dennis O'Brien. Uh, as an Irishman, being here on the St. Patrick Day is really a sign of commitment. So I would like to congratulate all the Irish uh, participants here on a very good uh, St. Patrick Day. <laughs> Let me... <laughs> As usual, we have a full agenda, and I'm very much, uh, I do very much to make sure that we have uh, time for fruitful, interactive discussions. So I will be brief uh, as much as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased with the progress that uh, we have made since we last met in New York last September. And we will hear more about this today. Globally, broadband continues to be at the top of the global the political agenda. And nowhere was this more clear than at the World Conference on International Telecommunications, the week in 2012, which took place in Dubai in December last year. There was universal consensus at the conference that broadband was the future. And I am pleased to note that the new International Telecommunication Regulations, the ITRs, which came out of the wicket, contain important new provisions notably in Article 6, which will encourage investment in international telecommunication networks, and which will promote competitive wholesale pricing for traffic carried. This is one of the most important articles in the revised ITRs, and I'm confident that it will play a very important role in furthering broadband rollout around the world and bringing the internet within reach of the 4.5 billion people who are still offline. We are among the privileged ones, the 2.5 billion people who are connected today. So I'm sure nobody in this room forgets about the remaining two thirds of the human population that are not con connected. The revised ITRs also contain several new resolutions which do not require any ratification, acceptance, or approval process and are not inherently binding for member states. They are nonetheless important texts that will themselves help to promote improved access to ICTs to all the world's people. In terms of the Commission, resolution number three is perhaps the most interesting of the five resolutions as it 
addresses the fostering of an, an enabling environment for the cre greater growth of the internet. The, res the resolution specifically calls for greater broadband investment and expresses support for the multi-stakeholder model and makes special mention of the broadband commission. To me, that's uh, really very important. Between now and our next meeting in September, ITU will be holding the fifth World Telecommunication Information and Communication Technology Policy Forum, WTPF 13, in Geneva, in May. WTPF 13 has been convened by ITU membership to provide a global forum to examine international internet-related public policy matters. And let me stress here that WTPF is a forum, not a treaty-making conference. It is a unique opportunity to air the issues as they are seen among fellow experts, and the forum will enable all stakeholders to contribute their unique perspective to the discussions and help the global community chart a common course forward. The preparatory process for WTPF 13 has been open and inclusive. It was led by an international expert group that was open to all stakeholders, irrespective of, the, of whether or not they are members of ITU. The expert group recently concluded its third and final meeting and approved six draft opinions by consensus for, foster, for further discussion at the policy forum in May. These opinions cover a wide range of internet-related global policy issues of significant relevance in today's world, and I'm confident that they will serve as a good basis for fruitful high-level discussions at WTPF 13. Just before WTPF 13, on May 13th, we will be hosting a high-level strategic dialogue to discuss the importance of investment in infrastructure and the changing nature of ICT regulation. The focus will be on broadband, and I'm sure that many of the issues we discuss here in Mexico will form a key part of the input of that dialogue. And the reason why I'm mentioning those two important uh, events is that I would like to invite you all to join us. Before I close, I would like to give thanks, to, thanks on behalf of the whole commission to the following organizations who have made contributions of, uh, for 2013. They are Oredu, formerly QTEL, QTEL rebranded uh, in Barcelona uh, two weeks ago as Oredu, Microsoft, Azerbaijan, Huawei, and Cisco all contributed, and I would like to thank them again. Special thanks must go to Intel, of course, and uh, it's regular for its regular annual contribution of the work of the Commission. We are tremendously grateful for your support and your continuing faith in the importance of this Commission and its ongoing work. On a separate note, let me also congratulate Huawei and Microsoft, both present here in the Commission, for their partnership in developing a low-cost smartphone for Africa. That's a tremendous achievement. Africa remains the continent with the lowest broadband penetration in the world today and represents enormous opportunities for those willing to seize them. And let me applaud Huawei, Microsoft, and others for playing their part in giving Africa online, in getting Africa online. I can assure that uh, the leadership in Africa is uh, ready. As President Kagame told you, we have convened the first Connect the World series in Africa in October, uh, two, in October uh, 2007, uh, in Kigali, in Rwanda, at the invitation of President Kagame. And he's convening this Transform Africa Summit to just make sure that leaders come back again five years later to revisit what they have they're committed to and see how we can fine tune our strategies and move forward. Of course, industry is invited. And uh, we are very grateful to President Kagame for taking that leadership and showing the lead in, in uh, not only uh, transforming Afri uh, uh, his own country, making it digital, 
but also making sure that the whole continent will benefit from that. And uh, I am personally grateful. Uh, we all should be to both him and uh, 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 Chairman, Co-Chairman Carlos Slim. They have attended every single meeting, no matter where the meeting had taken place. And uh, that uh, despite their very, very busy agenda, we all imagine, but we are very grateful. That shows their commitment. And I, I can tell you, Mr. Chairman, Chairman uh, Kagame and, and Slim, uh, the people here in this room are committed, and we are relaying back the information uh, to the rest of the world, and we know the world is listening to us, and we, have, we can make a difference. So I would like to thank you again. So let me conclude by encouraging everyone to keep up the momentum and keep shaping a broadband future for all. Thank you very much. Pleasure, Max.